So the three-day visit to Prime Minister Modi has concluded. A lot of deals from defense to space technology have been signed. Uh, a lot of areas of convergence, some points of divergence as well. To try and assess what this visit has achieved, I have with me Sadhanand Dhume, fellow with the American Enterprise Institute. Thank you very much, and a columnist with the Wall Street Journal. Good to be back on your show, Zaka. All right. Let's start with what is your assessment. It's been three days. We've seen all the pomp and ceremony and the grandeur, and we've also seen some of the substance, the defense deals, the space tech. What do you make of what's been achieved in this visit? What is your assessment? I think it's a very significant visit, and I think this has probably exceeded expectations. And uh, if you just look at both in terms of the symbolism and in terms of the substance, uh, for example, this is not the Prime Minister's first address to Congress, yeah. but if you kind of saw the kind of enthusiasm that you had in that room yesterday and you compared it to his last visit, I would say that it would be you know, even greater. So there was a lot of warmth, there was a lot of bonhomie, uh, clearly, the Prime Minister and President Biden seem to get along. And then there's an enormous amount of substance this time, right? I mean, you can add the caveat that they're going to actually have to work on delivering and making things, these things happen. But if you look at the specificity, right, if you look at the stuff like, you know, jet engines mm -hmm. and the, the space cooperation, yeah. uh, semiconductors, you name it. So the scale and the breadth and the ambition, I think, is definitely is, uh, you know, a, a step up from what we've seen before. So one of the things that um, you know many commentators say, and I'm sure you have this view as well, is a lot of this is driven by the fear of China or to try and put a check on China. But officials on both sides say uh, that's not a way to evaluate a relationship, that the Indo-US rela relationship currently and whatever it is going to achieve over the next few decades stands on its own. You reckon that China is driving India and, 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 and US closer together? So, you know, those are not contradictory statements, right? I mean, yes, the relationship stands on its own, right? I mean, the US and India have about almost $200 billion of trade. They have a deepening defense partnership. They have deepening technology cooperation and so on. Um, nonetheless, I think the, the fact remains that the driving force, the reason why these two countries are so invested in improving their relationship, the sense of urgency that they feel now uh, is certainly driven by common concerns about China. Uh, obviously, you can't expect you know diplomats to be you know bald about this, but um, the reality, as anyone here in Washington can tell you, uh, is that there are very deep concerns of uh, the Chinese plan, you know want to become a hegemonic power in Asia. That is obviously something that the United States would not like to see, and it's obviously something that India would also not like to see. So China has been the driving factor. This isn't something that happened yesterday. Um, this has been the case for, for 20 years. Um, that said, it's not the only factor, right? You've got other things going on. You have the fact that the Indian economy has become much more attractive to various companies uh, compared to sort of, you know, the, the old pre-liberalization yeah. days. You've got the existence of this very large Indian-American diaspora, 4.4 million strong. Yeah. You know, yesterday you had this sort of, a, you know, welcome ceremony at, at the White House, and I was thinking to myself that, well, you know, how many world leaders would be able to would attract a, mm -hmm. a group of people whose, whose origins are from that country yep. with such enthusiasm and so on? So you've got different legs. I'm not saying that the whole thing is just through, viewed through the, through the prism of China, but let's be realistic. The most important aspect is the rise of China. Both the Prime Minister and the President were asked this question about the track record of Mr. Modi's government when it comes to treating minorities. There is a firm view in the Indian establishment that the perception of how this government treats its minorities, especially in this part, the Beltway and in, and in you know, media elite here in the U.S., is very different from that reality. One of the things that the Prime Minister said is we don't discriminate when it comes to welfare schemes. Do you think that this is going to be a thorn in the flesh, a, a sore thumb that sticks out, while, like I said, there is convergence on many issues? So, you know, let me give you a nuanced answer, right? Because I'm one of those people who makes these criticisms, so right, mm -hmm. let's see. Um, I, I think that this is not a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. uh, it's clearly not a deal breaker. And, and, you know, it's a point I make in my column in today's Wall Street Journal. To the degree that there was a debate in Washington, the visit has settled the debate, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, the strategic issues are driving the relationship, and those grand strategic issues, and to a certain extent, the economic issues, are much more important than the issues of democracy, human rights, and so on. Um, but is it true that things would be even better if we didn't have these sort of, you know, uh, the, the, mm -hmm. these you know issues that are related to things like minority rights, things like uh, perception that press freedom has 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 it's eroded, right. that you know that set of set of issues, um, freedom of religion issues, and so on? 
And uh, I don't think, you know, I mean, obviously it's the job of the government to say that, well, everything is perfect and you guys are just nitpicking. Um, I, I don't think these things are made up. I don't think they're, you know, they come out of thin air. I think the sort of examples that people use and the evidence that they use is, you know, that it, it, it's concrete and real. Now, it's fine for them to have a disagreement and sort of say that we want to do this differently. Yeah. And obviously, this isn't going to derail the relationship. Um, but it is, a, it is, you know, to use your metaphor, it is a persistent, if not very large, but it is a persistent thorn in the flesh. All right, so there you have it. Uh, that's the assessment from one of the leading uh, think tank representatives here in Washington.